In today's video, we are going to take a close look at the brand new ASPC Wizbox AI. This is an Intel based brand new generation chipset, and I was really curious how this thing will perform when it comes to gaming and emulation. We're going to do some quick tests just to see what are we getting. So let's unwrap this thing, let's remove the plastic, and let's see if this thing is really worth the money. Comes in the fancy box, that's one thing to be sure. It's quite difficult to capture. I don't know what's inside of this box, but there's all this, let's say, black dust. And I have no idea where this is coming from. And ugh, it feels really filthy. But so when it comes to, let's say, the market, when it comes to mini PCs, AMD is just dominating this marketplace. And I'm just going to be honest that I am always be an Intel fanboy. But with AMD being so strong when it comes to the CPUs, yeah, I don't know for sure how long I will be an Intel fan. And maybe this particular mini PC will be the answer. So let's take a close look what are we getting inside the package. It's not a lot, it's just a mini PC and the necessary attachments. So first of all, they sent me the wrong package. They sent me the UK version, so I need to get myself a different adapter or a cable. It doesn't matter, we will fix it. The general case design looks kind of nice. But when you're looking at the very nice glossy black, I'm not a big fan of these things. Think about the PlayStation 3 back in the day. Man, after some time, this thing is going to be a fingerprint, but also a dust scratch nightmare. So the power supply is a quite beefy one with a maximum of 190.7 watts of a power output, just simply 19 volts. So it's not going to be difficult if you need to replace this one with a different one in the future. So and overall the case design looks kind of nice, it's more like a classy, but also when you're looking at the way how they designed this, it comes with a very nice, let's say, plastic overall feel, but not, let's say, the premium feel like a B-Links. So at the front we're having Type-C or USB-C, two USB 3.0, audio and non-off, and at the back we're finding two USBs, two HDMIs, and an RG45, an input for the power supply. And there was strangely no display port. At the bottom we're finding an extra fan. This fan is needed for giving the internal parts at the bottom parts some extra cooling. So this model is the F1M, comes with the CPU 155H. Later on we're going to be chit-chatting with CPUZ about the specifications. So another cool feature is that we can just remove the feed over here and that's also implemented with a screw. So it is more like a 2-1 situation going on. And the reason why if you want to upgrade it or replace the storage capacity you can do that fairly easy. You just need to lift over the case, it's just in plastic. But also you can see the fan at the bottom part. So this is the fan that tries to cool the parts in the inside. So and that's one of the two fans that I understand of because the CPU has another fan. It comes with dual channel and implemented an SSD. The SSD is in Rayson or something like that, never heard of it. It's the M2 2280 model. Let's check out what kind of memory banks we're having. And here we're having the Kingston. So that's very convenient and very cool that you're using a brand like Kingston. I'm a big fan of theirs. All right, it's time for some wicked nerdy time with the CPU Z. So this is the Intel Core, also have the code name with Meteor Lake. 28 watts of max TDP. And when you're looking at the specification over here, we're having the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. So what is also interesting is the cores 5P and 9E cores. We're clicking right click over here. Here we can actually see what it is doing. But in total, we do have a lot of different cores going on and even 22 threads. So that's kind of interesting. When it comes to the main board, there is a lot of information. When it comes to the manufacturer, the only information we're having is the bus specification, the PC Express 4.0. Memory, 32 gigabytes. Let's go to the other page. And here we see I have two slots of DDR5, 5600 Kingston. The graphics are going to be the Intel R graphics. And I'm curious how this is going to be performing when it comes to gaming and other applications. So in the next test, let's take a close look at the Cinebench, the R23. But let's take a close look at some temperatures because we're now rendering with Cinebench R33. It's going to be in seven minutes, like still needed to go. And you can just see already the package has been hitting the 93 thermal throttling at this point. But this is the P cores, the E cores are hitting around 83 Celsius. All right, so with Cinebench R23 done, so we're having the score for the multi-core is being 16,230 points, and with the single core is going to be 1,831 points. 
Looking at the ranking, so with multi-core, this is going to be almost equal to the AMD Ryzen, the Threadripper 1950X 16-core CPU. So and with the single core, let's check out what we're being there. So it's getting very close, it's being on the top over here, but it's going to be hmm, it's going to be similar to the i7 11th generation. So we're starting off with the crash test on 1080p in every setting set to the maximum. Now let's see how this new mini PC will perform. You don't belong here. Preach into the choir, friend. So let's move on to some Street Fighter 6. Let's check a new generation game. And the overall performance will be similar to the AMD or maybe less in many ways. This will be a good fight. But we're going to be checking out this overall mini PC for AAA gaming. I think it's not going to be the best choice if you want to get into the, some high-end AAA games, especially the new ones. Old stuff runs fine, indie game runs fine, a lot of games can be played at 1080p and even high graphics. With some games you just need to be like, lowering the graphics to still get an overall good frame rate per second, to have an overall like fun experience. It's great to see what we can actually play when it comes to these games, but it will really benefit when you're getting a GPU, a dedicated NVIDIA GPU in combination with the chip. That would be absolutely great. But let's get into the emulation part and let's see how far we can push it. We're starting off with some PlayStation 2 on higher resolutions. Round one, fight. <laughs> Fire up! 
When you're looking at the Xbox 360, that is one of those systems that is unplayable on a device like this. For this, we just need to have way more power. So unfortunate, where we do have the option to play PlayStation 3, we can play Xbox 360. Where the new Intel chip is absolutely powerful. But when you're looking at the competition, I don't know for sure if this is going to be actually a good deal. So in the end, when it comes to gaming and emulation, we have some overall great performance. But nothing, let's say, significant better than the AMD, let's say, counterpart. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Thank you all for watching. And it would be great to subscribe and hit the little bell.